The sailors aboard the five American destroyers now floating in the Mediterranean, or Barack Obama, the one man deciding whether to use those ships to send missiles into Syria. Nothing but somber faces around the table in the West Wing this morning as the president met with his security staff. And this afternoon, his secretary of state, John Kerry, stepped before cameras with intelligence that the Syrian army used poison nerve gas to beat back the rebellion in the Damascus suburbs last week and killed over 400 children. Aside from punishing Assad, he said an American strike is needed to send a message to our enemies in Iran and North Korea. We choose to live in a world where a thug and a murderer like Bashar al-Assad can gas thousands of his own people with impunity. Even after the United States and our allies said no, and then the world does nothing about it, there will be no end to the test of our resolve and the dangers that will flow from those others who believe that they can do as they will. A few hours later, President Obama wasn't nearly as passionate as Kerry, saying he has yet to make up his mind on an attack, while most of Congress, the American public, and even our closest ally, Britain, wishes he wouldn't. And I assure you, nobody uh, ends up being more war worthy than me. Uh, but uh, what I also believe is that uh, part of our obligation as uh, a leader in the world is making sure that uh, when you have a regime that is willing to use weapons that are prohibited by international norms on their own people, including children, uh, that uh, they are held to account. And certainly weighing on his mind tonight just how much more deadly gas is stockpiled in Syria. And for a deeper look on what that means, here's ABC's Brian Ross. Experts say there are enough chemical weapons in Syria to kill hundreds of thousands of people. It's probably fair to say that the Syrians have the largest known chemical weapons inventory on the planet. And officials in Washington Friday produced an intelligence report on the chemical attack that killed hundreds in the Damascus suburb of Ghouta earlier this month. We cannot accept a world where women and children and innocent civilians are gassed on a terrible scale. This kind of attack threatens our national security interests. The expected strike against Syria presents a minefield of problems for U.S. military planners in target selection. According to former White House official Richard Clark, now an ABC News consultant, Clark says there are two target packages being considered. One which is related to the chemical weapons use and makes them pay a price. Another one which makes them pay a much more significant price so that the United States can say, this wasn't a pinprick attack and we're serious. Under the larger attack plan, targets would include major Syrian airfields, tank depots, and perhaps even the Ministry of Defense in downtown Damascus. They're gonna have the exact coordinate down to the minutes and seconds of that building. They can, and they can hit that particular part of the building? They can go right through a 10-foot block of that building, so right into a particular office. The attacks under either scenario would come largely from U.S. destroyers a hundred miles away in the Mediterranean, firing cruise missiles. They'd probably like to do it at night, so the cruise missiles are harder to see, uh, because cruise missiles can be shot down. Uh, they fly low, they fly relatively fast, four or five hundred miles an hour, but they fly low. Yet senior U.S. officials tell ABC News it is unlikely the chemical weapons themselves at depots across Syria will be targeted if or when there is a military attack. If you are going to hit them, if you are going to try to blow them up, you know, are you going to create agent plumes which are going to damage you know, civilian areas? Charles Dolfer knows all about destroying chemical weapons. He led the U.N. team that destroyed Iraq's massive stores of them. It's not a simple process because the consequences of getting this wrong are enormous. Instead, senior officials tell ABC News the proposed U.S.-led military strike would target the specific military unit that guards and deploys Syria's chemical weapons. It's called Unit 450. They would be a prime target, but even there, there's a dilemma for those who are doing the targeting. Until earlier this year, Steve Simon was the director of Middle East Affairs at the White House National Security Council. 
He is now an ABC News consultant and director of the International Institute for Strategic Studies. If you're going to strike in a way that is directly related to chemical weapons use, you'd have to hit um, some part of Unit 450. On the other hand, the administration has got to be concerned that chemical weapons stockpiles don't leak because Unit 450 has been so seriously damaged, it's not capable of preserving and protecting the integrity of the storage facilities where the CW is located. That's because of the fear of what would happen if the regime's chemical weapons ended up in the hands of the rebels, where a dominant group in the opposition forces is an al-Qaeda affiliate called al-Nusra. They are a major part of the opposition, and uh, if they get it, uh, you know, one can't expect them to exercise restraint because of their ideology uh, and their extremism. The role of the al-Qaeda group fighting against Assad is one of the great ironies of the likely U.S. military strike in Syria. Twelve years after the 9-11 attacks, the United States finds itself on the same side as al-Qaeda trying to overthrow the Assad regime. It is a great irony. The al-Qaeda group has a series of major training camps in at least three different areas of Syria, according to Seth Jones, an expert in al-Qaeda and counterterrorism. It's not just an ally, it is an organization that's sworn loyalty to al-Qaeda in Pakistan. The U.S. is going to want to weaken it over time because a strong, capable al-Qaeda affiliate in Syria uh, will at some point turn against the United States. Syria is already bracing for the attack, with some residents fleeing the country into neighboring Lebanon. Syrian President Assad has said his country will fight back. And in Iran, military officials have threatened to retaliate against Israel and perhaps U.S. targets too. I would not be surprised if uh, Iranian-backed terrorists, including Hezbollah, but not limited to Hezbollah, uh, launch attacks uh, throughout the Middle East uh, on U.S.-related facilities. Now, that may not be an embassy, but it could be a facility that seems to be American perhaps an American airplane somewhere. So tonight at the White House, the final preparations are being made for what will be another controversial U.S. military action. I think the targets have all been nominated. The coordinates have all been loaded into the GPS programs and the cruise missiles that will be used to attack them. It's ready to go. Uh, the switch just needs to be thrown. For Nightline, this is Brian Ross in New York.